So here's a nice equilibrium problem that kind of encapsulates how to tell if you've got a precipitate and then once you do, how to be able to calculate the remaining concentration of ions in the solution. So here's what you're going to do with this question. A solution is prepared by mixing, and now you've got two chemicals that you're putting together. And here's a very high solubility compound because it's magnesium with nitrate. And so magnesium nitrate, nitrates are very soluble, and you've got 100 milliliters of 0.2 mole per liter of that solution, and you're going to mix it with 100 milliliters of 0.2 mole per liter sodium fluoride solution. Very soluble too because of the presence of the alkali metal there, sodium. So two really soluble compounds, you mix them together, but a reaction could take place between the magnesium ions and the fluoride ions in solution where the KSP of magnesium fluoride is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 9. And what that means is that, well, could a precipitate actually form here of magnesium fluoride? And if it does, then once the precipitate forms, how much of the ions do you have remaining in the solution? That's the question. So, First of all, well, how are you going to be able to tell if you've got a precipitate or not? Well, what you do is you, since you've got a K value, calculate Q. Once you've got Q, you can determine whether or not you've got a precipitate. So let's do that. Um, so first of all, how do you do that? Well, okay, <laughs> here's Q. Q equals the concentration of magnesium ions times the fluoride ions squared because, look, what you've got here for this, and don't look at this reaction yet because I'm going to be setting you up with something here, but magnesium fluoride, MgF2 in equilibrium with magnesium ions and two fluoride ions, when you write the KSP equals expression for that, you're going to get the concentration of this times this one squared. Now, but we're going to plug in concentrations that might not be at equilibrium, and that's going to be Q. So what's Q equal to? Well, Magnesium fluoride, that ion, and the F negative squared that we just said. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the concentration of those ions in solution and plug them in. What's the concentration of the magnesium ion here? Well, magnesium nitrate dissociates into one magnesium ion and two nitrate ions, so the concentration of the magnesium ion is 0.2. The concentration of the F negative ion in this right here is 0.2 as well when this dissociates into Na positive and F negative. So I took those two concentrations of those two ions from this, this, this scenario here, plugged them into the expression, and I get 8 times 10 to the negative 3. What does that mean? It means then that the Q value here of 10 to the negative 3 is greater than the KSP of 6.4 times 10 to the negative 9. When the Q value is greater than the K value, what does that mean? It means that you've got a situation where a precipitate is going to form. When Q is greater than K, you have a reaction where you've got precipitation. So when Q does that, greater than a K value there, you know that you're going to get a solid that's going to form. That means then that the magnesium ions are going to bond with fluoride ions in solution to make magnesium fluoride solid. Okay, um, now, if that is the case, and you've got concentrations that have been plugged in that have exceeded that value there, what are you going to do to be able to figure out the concentration of the ions now in solution? Well, the first thing you have to do is react the two chemicals together to knock out all the magnesium fluoride that's going to form as a solid. And since that reaction takes place quite readily, where you have, well, first of all, when you're reacting these chemicals together, how many moles of this is reacting with how many moles of this? Well now, let me appeal to your sense of chemistry to understand that 100 milliliters is really 1, 2, 3, 0.1 liters. And if you have 0.1 liters and 0.2 moles per liter, when you multiply moles per liter times liters together, you're going to get moles. 0.1 times 0.2 means you have 0 0.02 moles of this chemical present in the solution. Did that make sense? I hope so. That's going back to solution chemistry and hopefully you've got that kind of mastered right now. 0.1 liters of 0.2 mole per liter F negative ion, when you multiply that together you also get 0 decimal, 0 0.02 moles. And that's significant digits. Put some zeros after that. That's fine. <laughs> okay. But here's the deal. You've got 0.02 moles of each, and some of you would say, well, that canceled out, chem guys, so you've got none of those ions left in solution, kind of thing. Kind of, but not really, no, no, no. Do you see the 1 to 2 ratio here? 
for every 2 here, you only need 1 to react here. So for every 0 0.02 here, you really only need 0 0.01 here. Isn't that right? And so therefore, you are left with, in this solution, think about it, you are left with magnesium ions that are in excess. And you've got fluoride that is completely gone. But not really. Because, remember that now that you've got this picture happening here, where you've just got a whole bunch of precipitate down here. And by the way, how much precipitate do you have? Well, you have 0 0.02 here that reacted with 0 0.01 here to make magnesium fluoride here. So you made 0 0.01 moles of this chemical right here, because that's how much reacted here. 0 0.02 here to make 0 0.01 here, 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. And that's in the bottom right here. All those particles are the MGFs down here. But what's the concentration now of the Mg2 positive ions in solution? Well, you're going to say it's 0 0.01. What's the concentration of the F negative? Well, there ain't any. But remember, this chemical is now going to enter into equilibrium where you're going to get the rate of forward equaling the rate of reverse reaction here, and you're going to get concentrations of those two ions in solution. Now, we've done the stoichiometry part with 100% arrow. Now we do the equilibrium part. So in the bottom of that beaker, here is what's going on. The magnesium solid is now making ions here of Mg2 positive and F negative. Initially, though, there was Mg2 positive left over. 0 0.01 of it did not react. It's swimming around in the solution. So we have an initial concentration of that. Now, that's 0 0.01 moles, but remember, it's concentration. So we have to divide by the volume of the solution. It's not 100. It's 200. It's a mixture of the two now, right? So when you divide that into that, that's the initial concentration of that chemical right there. And of course, the initial concentration of that chemical, when you divide 0 0.01 by 0 0.2, you get 0 0.050 moles per liter. So that's the initial concentration of the Mg2 positive. There's none of that. What do you do? What's the change? You are going to lose of this chemical right here to make X here and 2x here, so the concentration at equilibrium is going to be 0 decimal 0, 050 0 plus x and 2x. Now, Ksp equals the concentration of the magnesium ions times the concentration of the F negative ions, skvert, and so the Ksp value, which is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 9, equals, what's the magnesium concentration? 0 decimal 0, 050 0 plus x times 2x and squared. Remember, the x is going to be a very, very small number because it doesn't really have a very large k value. You can disregard x when it's added to or subtracted from something. So that means then that this one's gone. So what you're going to do now is you're going to get 6.4 times 10 to the negative 9 equals, and it's going to be 4x squared times 0 0.050 and when you do that math and solve for x, you get that right there, which is going to be 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 when you solve for x. What is that? That's going to be, well, it's neither of the answers here, right? Because the answer has to be that you plug x back into these two. What is the concentration of the Mg2 positive in solution? It's going to be 0 0.050. That concentration that we had left over uh, after the reaction took place, plus this amount here, which is so negligible, it's still going to be 0 0.050 moles per liter. But the F negative does have a concentration in solution. It wasn't totally wiped out. Well, it kind of was in the reaction. We treated it like there was nothing left in order to make an equilibrium and then figure out how much there was left. <laughs> and what happened was, we get 2 times that number right there, which is going to be 3.6 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. A very small concentration of F negative in solution, and yet, that is its concentration. So, in this question, you, we were able to, uh, to uh, calculate Q values, and when the Q is greater than K, you've got a precipitate. If Q is less than K, you ain't got no precipitate. If Q equals K, it does precipitate too. You're right at the point of precipitation. And then, how can we find the concentration of ions remaining in solution? After we do some stoichiometry, we then go back and do the equilibrium problem.